India decided AI should be more inclusive and it should focus on social empowerment. So as a result, we came up with this strategy called AI for All. And uh, Niti Aayog, the national think tank in the country, uh, they focused on creating this strategy. They looked up various sectors where this approach can create most value. And they identified sectors such as agriculture, healthcare, uh, education, where this approach is now being prioritized. So that's India's approach to AI. And at the same time, we use this term race, responsible AI for social empowerment. Considering that India has many age-old challenges, you know, being an emerging country, a big country with numerous, numerous kind of geography, numerous kind of uh, demography and languages in you know, almost 100 languages, it is important that we use such a powerful technology to address many of these existing challenges. So that's where right now the focus is. So, India has 20 official languages and uh, I think around 100 uh, unofficial languages. Uh, even there are languages such as Gondi, which has 6 million speakers, yet it doesn't have a script. So the linguistic diversity in the country is very vast. Even though the official administrative languages right now are Hindi and English, many uh, the country is now divided in, lin in ling linguistic units, uh, many parts of the country, especially south, where states are based on the language we speak. So this has been a big problem from an administrative standpoint of view and especially from a service delivery standpoint of view. One good example is the, the Apex Court of India, the Supreme Court. It gives verdicts in English and Hindi, while if you come down in the local state courts, which are the high courts and the, then there's the local municipal courts, which is the bottom level, they in many cases give verdicts and the orders in local languages. So this is a huge challenge and uh, that's why India started focusing on the la language technology. We have the National Language Translation Program, the Bashini Initiative, then the AI for uh, Bharat Initiative where we focus on building language corpus, which is the data set that needed to enable these AI language models, right? So we are focusing on translation models uh, from English uh, to other Indian languages as well as between Indian languages which is a very <laughs> difficult challenge considering that the data set for these uh, languages are very minimal. Uh, recently Kaggle did a survey on data scientists and uh, ML engineers. I think they, uh, the survey was based on a big data set and they found that there is a big diversity, a big disparity between uh, male and female, number of male and female data scientists and uh, ML AI engineers, right? According to the Kaggle, uh, the, the ratio is 73 to 27. 73, uh, for every 100 uh, data scientists, there is 73 men and uh, 27 uh, female uh, data scientists. Now, when it comes to India, these numbers are uh, quite interesting. The recent uh, Stanford AI index points out that India has a 55-45 ratio which is very uh, amazing to see uh, happen. I think this has a lot to do with the skilling initiatives uh, and uh, reskilling initiatives. So the government has taken up uh, interest in pro providing a lot of skilling initiatives through its SYM platform, the future skills initiatives by the industry and many other. At the same time, there are these companies are focusing on reskilling their labors. So there is a priority to ensure that's an inclusive approach when it comes to AI skilling and deployment of AI tools in the country. So whether it's women or uh, linguistic minorities or uh, any other group, uh, we ensure they are also included in this journey.